Good morning, St. Mark's. This is a day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is good that we are gathered even in virtual space for the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord. A few notes and introduction to our virtual worship space today. Um, you'll note that um, uh, in our Zoom worship space, the way it works is anybody that's making noise, the screen and the camera will jump to you. So please note that I can see you and you can be seen by others. So if you don't wanna be seen by others, you can mute um, your video as well as your audio controls um, in the space here. So just know that you can be seen by others. Um, and if you don't wanna be seen by others, go ahead and mute your video. But I especially love um, being able to see you all during communion and during preaching. Um, it is great to be able to see that we are still gathered to celebrate the joy of this day together. <laughs> Um, a few notes about our worship service this morning. Um, we will be giving thanks for the gift of baptism. So if you have a glass of water or some kind of water um, with you to make a sign of the cross and remember, uh, that would be an appropriate way to participate along with us this morning. Also, we will celebrate communion. So if you have um, some bread and some wine or uh, crackers and grape juice, you're invited to participate along with us. But no matter where you are on your faith journey or where you are in the world this morning, let us celebrate the joy of this day um, and the good news that Christ is risen. So let us begin our worship in our bulletin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning, you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. On this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the 10th chapter of Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality but in every nation, anyone who is God-fearing and does what is right is acceptable to God. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. Jesus commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm will be read responsibly. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts violently. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. 
By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading is from the third chapter of Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is at, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew in the 28th chapter. Glory, glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing was white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified, for he is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him. This is my message for you. So the women left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you o Christ. O Christ. So never in a million years did I think that we would be celebrating an empty tomb and an empty church on Easter Sunday. But an empty tomb and an empty church is kind of the point. That when we come together today to celebrate the joy of the resurrection, we are celebrating an empty tomb. And in these times of pandemic, we're celebrating an empty church because we know that we're doing our part to help flatten the curve so that others might live. And so I know it's weird and it's awkward and it's strange and it's surprising but in this, we experience resurrection and we experience God's good news and love coming to us even though we are apart. And so we give thanks for things like technology that help us be together in maybe even more profound ways than we ever could by coming to this building. Because the truth of resurrection is what we celebrate this day. So I think it's also fitting that this year, it was appointed that we read Matthew's telling of the resurrection account. The resurrection account that has earthquakes and flashes of lightning and, and people being terrified by this good news. I think in the wake of natural pandemics and, and things that are happening in our world that have us shaking our heads saying, what is going on? We too might be a little frightened. And so it's really good to hear the gospel account of Jesus and the messenger announcing the good news that says, do not be afraid. Because amid the fear and trembling is when the surprise of God begins to turn around the impossible and good news begins to break forth. It was in the fear and the uncertainty of the women that that day at the tomb that the surprise of God comes forth 
And God's message begins to break into us amid our fear and uncertainty with words that say, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid and behold that Christ has been raised just as he said. And then, and then there's this glorious invitation, come and see. At the heart of Matthew's telling of the gospel and what happened to that tomb that day was the desire to see Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I feel that desire to see Jesus in these days is tangible. That people have a longing to experience and see Jesus in these days. So all during Lent, for us at St. Mark's, we decided to theme our Lenten pilgrimage around the theme 2020 vision, seeing Christ anew. Well, I had no idea that this was coming, and I had no idea that we would be seeing Christ in this way. I had no idea that I would be seeing Easter Sunday across a computer screen. I had no idea that we would be seeing Easter celebrated in our homes. But here is the vision of Christ that continues to show us resurrection. And I have seen Christ in a whole new way. And so experiencing Holy Week over digital means and with us physically distanced has given me a greater appreciation for the way resurrection works in our world today. And so over the last few weeks, here are some of the ways that I have seen Jesus continuing to go ahead of us and show us the way. Because the first week that we um, saw that schools were shut down, I saw people in our community come together with restaurants and uh, teachers and school administrators to make sure that the kids and families that depend on school lunches made sure that they had food. And so the resurrected body of Christ here in our community gathered and we fed each and every day for a week 275 meals to kids in need. Resurrected Jesus shows up. Or the way that we have adapted worship to online means with a host of people and all of you being patient and gracious with us as we've learned all of these electronic mediums, that Christ continues to come to us and here we are on Easter Sunday morning, not looking at a recording, but celebrating live in person in virtual community. Or how we've heard Christ's mandate on Monday, Thursday, to love as Christ has loved and to love others. And how on Monday, Thursday, we observe this sacred ritual and tradition of foot washing. And how this year for me, that took on a whole new meaning as we have been focusing on how we wash our hands to keep other people safe. We're not washing feet, but we're washing our hands to keep others safe. Because that's how we hear resurrected Christ's mandate to love others. Or how we continue to remind people that Easter is coming by distributing palms in a bucket for anyone to pick up this week, or how our kids have on multiple occasions after many rainstorms this week have continued to chalk our sidewalk out front to remind those who are walking by that Easter is still here, whether we're isolated or not. Because the good news of Easter is that you can't quarantine resurrection. You can't quarantine the good news that we celebrate. These are the ways that I have seen Jesus resurrected going ahead of us in these times to Galilee, which is exactly as Jesus promised. You see, Jesus promising to go ahead of the disciples to Galilee meant something to them. Because for those who don't know, Galilee was the place that Jesus did his ministry. Jesus called the disciples in Galilee. Jesus healed the sick in Galilee. Jesus welcomed the stranger in Galilee. Jesus fed the multitudes in Galilee. And so for resurrected Jesus to say that I am going ahead of you to Galilee means that Jesus is going ahead of us into the mission field, into those places that we find the hungry, the lost, the lonely, and those in need. Not that we would meet him there, but that Christ goes ahead of us before us showing us the way. 
So perhaps it's fitting for us this year that we might consider a Jesus who goes ahead of us and meets us in those places. Christ is going ahead of us in these days to be with us, to be with us in our fear and our isolation, because Christ always goes ahead of us. And so this year, perhaps we would consider that Christ is meeting us there with you at home and on the street corner, rather than here in this building, this empty, empty building, because resurrection means that Christ meets us where we are with this profoundly good news. Do not be afraid because Christ is with you. We see that Christ goes before us. And so last week, I imagine the image of Christ's triumphal entry on Palm Sunday, of Jesus going ahead of us and leading the charge into the most dangerous of places, because Christ knew where he was going to the cross. And Christ knows what it's like to face danger square on. And so Christ goes ahead of us and into all those places of pain and persecution in these days. Christ is riding triumphantly into those ICUs and those hospitals. Christ is riding ahead and going before us with delivery drivers and restaurant people that are delivering us food, with those who work in our grocery stores to keep vital necessities on the shelves for us during this time. On Good Friday, Father James Martin posted on his Facebook page a picture of a Jesuit priest who did an image and tableau of Christ on Good Friday. So it's the body of crucified Jesus being tended not by Mary and Martha, but by people in the hospital in full protective gowns. I have to believe that Christ is with us in this pandemic because Christ promises to go ahead of us and to be with us. And we do not fear because Christ is risen and is with us each and every day. And so we, like the disciples, when we behold this vision of resurrected Jesus, we, we want to hold on to the feet of Jesus. We want to hold on to that fleeting feeling of Christ's presence with us. In many ways, this is so much like the first story of Easter not with us in mass in a building, but maybe with a tinge of fear and trepidation, holding on to those fleeting images of Christ. We, like those early disciples, are behind the locked doors. For the disciples, it was the fear of the authorities coming to get them next. And for us, it might be the fear of a virus that's spreading on the scene. But Jesus continues to ride on into our communities and show us the way to Galilee, to those places of ministry, to the places where we might see him and experience Christ's peace. Jesus continues to ride on in resurrection, right into the fear and uncertainty to say, peace be with you. Do not be afraid. See me. See resurrected me and all of its glory. See the risen Lord and behold the risen lamb. And then go tell the others. Beloved, I think we will have an amazing story of resurrection to tell after this is all over. Of ways that the church has risen in more profound ways than we could ever imagine. I have to believe that we are coming out of this on the other side with a more glorious and radiant vision of what it means to be community, to be family, to be citizens of this global world that we live in, of people that care for one another. Because Jesus continues to show up and tell us, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid for others. Jesus will continue to show up for us during this pandemic and perhaps in more surprising ways than we could ever imagine. Because I've seen in this time with slower schedules that we have more time for each other 
families are having discussions that they wouldn't have dreamed of having in a million years, asking the difficult questions and getting yes, even some of the difficult answers. We've seen Jesus come to us and deepen on uh, our relationship with one another as we've come to depend on each other in more profound ways with those of us checking on our elderly neighbors, making sure they have groceries and things that they need, securing um, uh, groceries for them and checking on our elderly neighbors and school children. We've seen God's love take root in our community in new and profound ways because resurrection and new life is not a possibility, but a reality. So I've seen the church rising in new ways these last few weeks as we have been these heralds of God's good news in anxious times. And so I think that this, this might possibly be the testimony that we have been appointed to tell about the church building that is empty and a church that has been raised from the dead, deployed and sent to Galilee to be part of the resurrected body of Christ. Never in a million years would I have imagined celebrating an Easter like this. But I am so appreciative that we are celebrating a resurrection like this, that I can't help but tell others about it. Be not afraid. Sing out for joy at this good news. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We will sing our hymn of the day, Be Not Afraid, several times through. Please join me when you're comfortable. Be not afraid, sing out for joy. Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy. Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy. Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy. Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy. Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy. Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy. Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing Together with the whole church, let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Risen Christ, we give thanks for your presence in and among your church. Remain with us, 
reminding us of your life and love. Help the church to be your body in the world today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mother God, you raised your son Jesus from death to life, and we pray that you would do the same for your creation. Bring all that you have created from devastation to new life, and show us the extent of your love for all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, you stand with the oppressed as one who was persecuted and attacked by those in power. We pray that you would turn the hearts of those in leadership today who continue to abuse their power over others. Reorient them towards life and love rather than fear and greed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Spirit, you abide with each of us at all times. Be with those who feel anxious, alone, and hopeless, that they may know your comforting presence this day and always. Enliven your people to be your servants in this world, reaching out to those in need and standing with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, you are powerful and loving beyond our comprehension. Be with all those for whom fear and sickness, death and grief seem ever present. You have overcome even death and can never be separated from us. Remain with all those in need and clothe them in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teacher, you, hold your church, you told your church to bring everything to you in prayer. We thus bring you the concerns of this community. We ask that you would bring your peace and healing to all those in need. And especially today, we pray that you would be with Jenny and Dottie, Lauren and Anne, Carol, Jamie, Lindsay, Susan, Joan, Dawn, and Katie. Be with all those struggling due to this illness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Spirit, you have guided and inspired your church in the ages past and will do so in the ages to come. We give thanks today for the lives and work of the Petri brothers, Olavis and Laurentius, renewers of the church in Sweden. Grant that we may also be enlivened by your word to live our lives in service to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you always. Also, also with you. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with those whom you've gathered or via our screens and gallery view, you can share peace with one another. The peace of the Lord. So before we um, receive our digital offering today, um, I'll uh, make a few announcements about uh, things here. Um, we will continue to, to keep programming and things um, um, in suspension until this ban is lifted and we're allowed to gather again. But there are a couple of things that we have shifted that we do as programming virtually. Um, so the, um, there's a couple of things during the week that the links for those Zoom sessions will always try and be in the um, uh, Friday pastor's email, but I think I've got them now set up as recurring things so the links should stay the same pending that Zoom doesn't decide to change things during critical times of the year. Like I said, it was like the copier going down. It's like God still finds ways to throw wrenches at us to celebrate Holy Week. So um, I think we've got those things ironed out. And by the many of you being on today, I think we've worked out some of the kinks with our Zoom sessions um, and you all found your way here today. So we are so thankful for that. Um, if you're visiting with us virtually and want to be added to that mailing list, I will invite you to go ahead and put your email in the chat. 
craft. Um, we'll save that at the end of the session here today and so we can get you on and make sure that you're part of those passer emails on a weekly basis. So the programming that we've got going um, throughout the week is on Tuesday at 2, it's Tea Time with Pastor. Tea Time at 2 on Tuesdays, um, where over the next couple of weeks, I'll be doing a little mini Bible study, but largely just check-in time with you to see um, how things are going, what we're um, struggling with, and um, close with a little bit of prayer. So um, I invite you to grab tea or coffee or um, whatever beverage you choose at two o'clock in the afternoon um, and join us um, uh, for that time. Then on Wednesday mornings at 1030, I will be leading the faith formation lessons. So um, it's a great opportunity for the kids to engage with one another, um, not on mute, and they can see each other and kind of interact uh, with each other. And we'll continue to go through the faith formation lessons uh, that we normally do here on Sunday. And I love it because I get to teach the kids, which I haven't done in a long time. So um, that's a really great thing that we'll be doing each week on Wednesdays at 1030. And then on Friday, Friday at 2 o'clock, um, our confirmation class will continue to gather um, for the next couple of weeks as we finish out the curriculum for uh, them for the year. So for confirmation at 2 o'clock, we'll start that again um, on Friday. Um, I'll draw your attention to um, other things that might be in the um, email uh, or, or in the electronic bulletin. There are some announcements towards the end of that. I plan to be in touch with Sandy over at Colonial Neighborhood Council this week that as this um, uh, isolation time continues to drag on, I'm sure the needs at our local food pantry are going to change and shift, but to check in with her um, to see about that. So Karen, Hannah, if you can hear that announcement um, and check in with um, Sandy and let us know if there are ways and things that we can do as resurrection people um, to help our community neighbors in need. But I pray that everyone is safe at home um, and that we are adjusting to this new norm at least for a little bit. And so I give thanks that all of you have taken the time this morning to be with us virtually. Um, before we receive our electronic offering, I'll uh, draw your attention in the bulletin as a QR code to download our Give Plus app, which is a way that you can give electronically here, electronically and contactlessly um, here to the church. So we continue to have ongoing needs um, here at the church um, uh, during this time. Um, and so uh, if you usually use envelopes and participate in offering in that way, I invite you to just drop those envelopes in the mail. Um, we'll get them here at the church and we'll kind of create um, our Sunday offering deposits um, as we have the ability to do that. Um, but the easiest and best way is always to either use your bank bill pay system or use the Give Plus app to continue to have those things. Um, so as we prepare to receive our offering, thank you. Thank you for all of the ways that we continue to be people of the resurrection during these times, inspiring others with words of hope and uh, sustenance. As Christ has inspired us, we are sent as heralds of this good news in the world because Christ does go ahead of us to Galilee and we share that good news with the world. So thank you. Let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. Amen. So now we've come to the part of our service where we celebrate Holy Communion. And so if you've gathered bread and wine, I invite you to bring that to the center as we gather around the table of our Lord to remember the night in which he was betrayed. When Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and then gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then when supper had ended, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we prepare to pray the words our Savior taught us, we will unmute everyone and um, will allow us to speak the words it together, 
Um, and in our brokenness of saying this, we remember that we are unified by these words no matter where we are. So let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, for thine is the kingdom, wait for Bree to get everybody on mute again. There we go. Let us come now to the banquet and behold a vision of the risen Christ. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen just as he said. Now go in peace and share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you.